Getting started in property can be really hard, but I created a three-part plan to give me laser focus and a solid strategy to build up my property portfolio, starting with just £50,000. And in this video, I explain what my strategy is and how I'm following the plan to build up a thriving and sustainable property development group. If you're struggling on how to get started, then this video will help give you clarity and lift that foggy confusion. I get it. It's really hard to start a business and there are lots of confusing strategies out there as well as lots of bad advice out there on YouTube and other different websites. But by day, I used to work in London working for a bank and took my product management experience of setting long strategy and a delivery roadmap and brought that into the world of property investing. Now, this was predominantly within the software side of finance and within the bank, but it's so transferable. It's really all about taking a plan and a vision and starting to craft that into something that's tangible and that can be delivered in real time and that's physical that people understand. And essentially it takes something that's incredibly complex in simplifying it and breaking it down into stages so that people can build it and work towards that final goal. It's exactly the same in software as it is for property investing. You have problems, you have dependencies, and it's all about solving those problems and starting to overcome it and deliver that long strategic roadmap. And on top of that, I used to work in commercial lending. So I've had experience firsthand working for a tier one lender in the UK and seeing what it's like on the other side where the bank are making decisions on businesses and whether to lend to them or not. So let's say that you've got £50,000 to start with. Now that's an awesome amount of money to get started in the world of property investing. Now there are loads of videos out there talking about no money down deals, but you need money to invest into property, hence it's called property investing, because you still have money to spend on the deposit, the solicitors, different parts of the legal fees. If you're in a limited company and you need to sign a personal guarantee on the mortgage, then you have to pay that as well. You might have mortgage fees, you might have a broker fee, there's loads of costs around that particular process. For me to get crystal clear clarity on my business plan, I created a three phase strategy. Now phase one was all about building the foundations of the business. Secondly, it was building sustainable cash flow into the company. Company. And phase three is all about building size and scale. So let's focus on phase one first, which is all about building the solid foundations. Now, there are three reasons why this was really, really important to start as the first phase. Firstly, it was all about gaining crucial experience. Now, you could watch loads of YouTube videos, read all of the magazines, listen to all of the podcasts and network with a million people over on Instagram in the property community. But until you actually jump into the project and learn firsthand how to do it. You will learn so much by going through that process and by making the mistakes, but you can still be well informed of how to go through the process to minimize the mistakes that happen along the way. And I have learned so much going through a property, limited company property process compared to a residential normal home. There are some interesting differences and problems that you have to get around just in the buying process. Never mind then going through the actual refurb part of the process. Secondly, I was able to self-manage the refurb myself. Now, this was really, really important because I could get a huge appreciation for this part of the process. It'd be all too easy to outsource this to a builder or a main contractor straight away. But by being there in the detail, I've really learnt, understood and appreciated what it really, really takes to go through all of the set of first fixes in a property development refurbishment project and then thinking about the second fixes. But also it's about what goes in what order and when should you get trades in and when shouldn't you get trades in. And by really being in the detail and solving all of the and um, quite annoying and complex problems at times, that has given me a great appreciation so that when I do in the future spend more time looking at a screen and managing it from a distance, I've got all of those thoughts and processes in my head already to make sure problems don't happen on the ground. Thirdly, it was building the solid foundations. Now, typically to get an HMO mortgage, you need to show that you have about 12 months of landlord experience. Now, this means that you need to get a buy to let and be a landlord for that amount of time. It's not impossible to get an HMO mortgage as a first time investor or with no landlord experience. It just means that your rates will be more limited. You'll end up paying more money and you're thus limited to less lenders amongst all of those out there. And in my case, I'm using a whole company structure, which means that it's a complex business and that in itself limits my availability with certain lenders because other ones don't want to touch holding company structures. So by ticking all those boxes as much as possible, you can make yourself more attractive to more lenders and therefore get better rates on your projects, which can really, really make the difference when it comes down to profitability and net rental income every single month if you can limit the amount of expense that you're spending on the mortgage. Likewise, for development finance, you need to be able to show that you can manage 
a project that you have a good build team and that you can take an old unloved property and create it into something beautiful and even make those steps to the point where you can really start to build brand new homes from scratch and deal with all of the planning and part of all of that process that happens in new build developments. For me, by starting off by doing a £17,000 refurb and showing that it's a profitable, healthy project, that can show to the lenders and unlock as many good rates as possible for development finance in the future. So phase one in a nutshell, really for me, is all about building respect and trust with the lenders to make sure that I can then get better, more available finance in the future to fund bigger projects. Now let's look at phase two, which is all about building capital and cash flow. Now this part of the strategy is really all about building money within the business and this is all sustainable growth where I can build up more capital where I don't need to take out any profits in the company to pay a salary or dividends I can just keep on reinvesting it and by creating sustainable cash flow within the business this means that I'll be able to replenish my deposits and my input of cash into the next project and the next project and the next project but then as I start to look back and refinance the old properties I can then start to recycle some of that cash and thus that snowball grows and grows and grows. So the phase one plan and really was the vanilla buy to let and doing a refurbishment project just to lay those foundations. But in phase two, it's all about getting HMOs and co-living spaces in awesome cities like Sheffield, where I'm from, where it has great universities, loads of students. And you know that if you create beautiful design-led co-living spaces, that you'll be able to rent out those awesome spaces for great groups of students and young professionals for years to come. And that's where sustainable cash flow can come from by investing all of the money up front to create an awesome property project. If I can take an old commercial building and then convert that into incredible residential co-living spaces, this ticks two boxes. One is the cash flow that I've mentioned, but secondly, it also steps into the medium-sized development territory, which means I can take the experience from working on the vanilla by to let and then work with lenders to get more funding to convert a project and do a way bigger conversion and development project overall. So there's a tick box for the lending, and also from the co-living projects, a solid four bedroom house can still generate a good thousand pounds profit after all the costs every single month. So anything above four bedrooms becomes an absolute win-win where you start to add more and more profit to the bottom line of the business. By piecing your business into phases, you can really begin to understand what your goal is, but more importantly, what steps you need to take to get there. Rome wasn't built in a day and sometimes it can be hard looking at the end result or goal or looking at experts in their field and feeling overwhelmed trying to copy what they're doing. Remember that it probably took them a long time too. And phase three is a point in the business at some point in the future where I can really start to look back and enjoy all that experience on both the small scale projects and the medium scale projects and kind of ticking those boxes for experience for the lender and being able to manage different build teams. And having really ticked some of these boxes at this point, it's really about raising more capital either from tier one lenders from banks, but also from a private investment perspective as well, because the more attractive my portfolio is and the bigger the projects, I can demonstrate that as an individual and a company and a group, that I slash we can do awesome projects that are delivered on time, on budget, and then also don't overspend, which means that there are going to be solid returns for the private investors in the future. And it's these kind of projects that can really start to net you the millions of pounds of GDV or gross development value if you have enough units on the site. And that for me is going to be the pinnacle of what I want to do in my property development career. So by breaking up the whole process into phases, it means that I'm not going to have shiny penny syndrome and think too far into the future when actually I should be focusing on the now. At the moment, what's really important is just managing trades day by day. It's calling up the plumber to come and fix some pipes in the house. It's calling a plasterer to asking him to skim some of the walls. And it's all of these basic things now that are going to make such a huge difference further down the line. And all this experience now working directly with the trades is completely invaluable. If you don't have 50K to get started, then my best advice to you is just to keep on saving because property investing is called investing for a reason and that's because you need money to put into it in the first place otherwise what are you investing in the first place so that's really really crucial get a stocks and shares ISA pump as much money as you can into it every single month and just keep saving up as much money for a solid deposit to work on a really good first project so property prices are going up the market's really competitive so it is getting harder so the sooner you can save up that money and get in the sooner you can start crafting that snowball and letting it grow over time 
If you enjoyed this video, then definitely check out my eight streams of passive income and how I managed to generate over £10,000 in a single month. This will really start to help you understand how to build an income online that can then start to fund a property passion project and building up your own capital by saving your online income. So definitely check out this video and get some inspiration of ways to make money online a little bit more passively.